Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Get nice and deep. What's going on, guys? So today I'm going to be taking you through a full body workout that I'm going to be doing here in the garage. Most of my workouts are full body. It's just the way I like to do things. Uh, we're going to have a slight emphasis on upper body today. And uh, it's going to be a good one. Hopefully, we're going to be lifting some solid weights. My back is starting to feel good after being a little jacked up the past couple of weeks. So hopefully getting to some weights I have not really done in a little bit. Um, we're also going to be adding in some club work today, which is, you know, along with the kettlebells, one of my favorite things to do. Now, uh, if you were someone who has no idea how to use clubs, we will be going over some technique today. If you don't have one, you just got kettlebells, I'll show you some stuff that you can do to replace the club in a workout like this uh, if you ever see that pop up. So I'm excited for it. It's going to be a good one. Uh, but before we get started, let's go to the whiteboard and talk about it. All right, so today I'm going to be following my go-to structure when it comes to putting together full body workouts. I use it all the time. I love it. It works. It's super time efficient. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? Today, starting off with the main lift is going to be five clean and presses on each arm. I usually start out, if, it's a, if I got my main lift, it's going to be snatches, clean and press, Turkish get-ups, or some sort of kettlebell complex. So today, clean and press, hopefully getting pretty heavy on these today, or fairly heavy. Like I said, it's been a little bit. Um, five reps on each arm, six sets. This gets done alone so I can embrace rest a little bit, about a minute and a half in between each set. So that allows me to kind of breathe, rest, and go up and wait. Then moving over to my accessory work, we have three exercises today as usual. Um, I tend to pick from four categories, push, pull, legs, and core, and I allow for some deviation of that, so I pick three from those categories. But again, like I said, a little bit more, more upper body focus today, so not perfectly following uh, that structure. So renegade rows is gonna be obviously a lot of pulling, but a lot of core work as well. The single arm club mills, this is where we're getting our club work in kind of the same concept a lot of pulling a lot of lab but a lot of core work as well um so kind of doubling down on that like i said lower body's just a little tired for some other stuff i was doing uh, earlier in the week and earlier today and then we're going to be getting into some cossack squats one of my favorite lower body exercises and something that most people need to be doing so they're moving left and right a little bit more three reps on each side i like to do lower reps and higher weight on this um because it's going to allow me to uh just challenge myself with some weight and build some mobility and then quite frankly if i do like five or eight reps on each side from caustic squats i'm sore shit and it's just not that fun so i'm gonna go anywhere from four to five sets on this probably leaning towards five but we're gonna see how i'm feeling as i already kind of did like a small workout this morning at this event that i went to so playing this one a little bit by ear but uh yeah overall should be good and then uh maybe we'll see how i'm doing at the end maybe we add in a little finisher i like to do that sometimes so uh yeah all right let's get rocking all right we are warmed up <laughs> Ready to go. First set starting at 80 pounds, 36 kilos for my non Americans. Five on each side. Let's do it. up enough. Whew. All right, that'll get juices flowing. All right, one down, five more to go. I think we're gonna go off for the next set. All right, let's do it. Shirt only made it one set today. It's freaking hot. So, it is what it is. All right, number two, 40 kilos. My non Americans, 88 pounds. Let's rock. Feels good. We're gonna stay there for 
another set before making any more jumps. All right, so on to set number five. Now, I did uh, two more sets without you guys. Um, using the 88, we're up to the 106. Now, I don't have a 97 here. So we're up to the 106, 48 kilos for my non-Americans. Um, honestly, I'm not sure how five is gonna go. It's been a little bit since I've done something like this. So uh, I guess we're gonna find out. Um, something you also notice too is I'm taking these cleans off of the ground each time instead of swinging them between my legs and cleaning them. So I'm technically doing a dead clean and press. That's what it's called when it starts on the ground. So a dead clean or a dead snatch. Um, I'm doing that today primarily because my back has been a little funky lately and I did some swings yesterday and I did some swinging snatches the day before. So I'm just giving my back just a little bit of a break. Um, neither one's right, neither one's wrong, neither one's better in my opinion, they're just different. Um, you will most likely be able to do more weight with your, or if you're swinging it, whether it's a clean or a snatch, so just something to keep in mind. Um, now, actually, if you are, Eric does kettlebell, he does not agree with that, which actually, it's ironically enough where I got these shorts, so if you like these shorts, go look up Touch Grass Co. They make some good stuff. These are super, super comfortable dad um he's just a good dude and i like him and he makes good stuff um but i still think he's wrong when it comes to being able to dead snatch or dead clean more than you can with the swinging variation but uh all right i digress five reps on each side hopefully we're gonna see how this goes wish me luck Shit, that was harder than it should have been. Oh, okay. Oh God. Whew. Okay. I brought this kettlebell here from the gym that I'm where I keep most of my bells at to specifically do that set. Oh shit, that was a little heavier than I thought it'd be. I also forgot. I actually fucking hate this kettlebell. It's not it doesn't have the best coating in my opinion. It's a little slippery. I like my Nike kettlebells. But Nike doesn't make a 106 or anything above 88, so got to make do with what we got. Oh, man, I got another set of that. All right. I'm going to need a couple minutes for this one. Whew. All right. That's enough rest. That was probably a little more than two minutes. I was smoked after that set. But last one. Here we go. Here we make our money. Let's go, baby. And hopefully I don't rip on this set. Let's find out. Oh, God. Oh, shit. All right. Two sets of five with the 106. 48 for the non Americans. Oh, that smoked me. That was hard. But I haven't done that in a little bit, let alone two sets of it. So 
I'm happy with it, but I got to build some strength back because that was tough. That was some sweaty shit. I worked out this morning a little bit. I should give myself some credit, but that's not really how I roll. Whew, okay. Must need a rest. And we head into our accessory work. It's gonna be tough too. No break in this one, all right? Let's rock out. Whew. Something I forgot to say at the end of that last set of clean and press. You may have seen me stop for a split second and check my hand to make sure I didn't rip because ripping sucks. And if I blow up any calluses or something like that, I'm switching my workout up. I don't have any sort of like bravado towards ripping. If I rip or I'm about to rip, I'm going to switch things up. I don't care. Ripping ruins the workout you're doing in that moment. It ruins your workouts for the next three, four, five, six, sometimes seven days. So like, I don't think ripping is cool. So if I rip my hands or I'm about to rip, I just change what I'm doing and I'm fine with that. Completely fine with it. All right, accessory work coming up. Five renegade rows on each arm. Okay, so that's that row in the push-up position. A little extra hardware kettlebells because of the stability aspect of it. 10 single arm club mills and then three caustic squats. We're going to go through this first set together so you guys can see how I go about this, uh, this accessory work because it's going to be done as a super set. All right. Five reps each arm of these renegade rows. Here we go. That was a little tougher than I thought too. So you'll notice my feet are super wide. A lot of people do renegade rows like garbage, honestly. They keep their feet close together and then when, there's a lot of hip shifting back and forth when they do their renegade rows. So you don't want that. The idea of doing your renegade rows, one of the ideas is your core should be lit up. If I'm constantly rotating, my core is not stabilizing when I do the renegade row. So get your feet out super wide to the point where your hips don't have to shift at all, okay? And then squeeze your abs tight to make sure that they don't shift while you're doing the exercise. All right, so club mills, we're going 10 on each arm. I'm gonna do the first set and then I'll talk about different ways you can go about these, all right? But 10 on each arm here, swinging in front, throw. Swinging in front, throw, two, three. the bad side. <laughs> Whew. So a few things going on there in terms of like adaptations or adjustments. Sorry. Um, if, so I'm doing single arm because I don't have a heavy enough club to challenge me. If you have a heavy enough club and you wanna do these with both arms, holding onto your club, more than welcome to do that. If you don't have a club but you have a mace, you can just do regular 360s. Doing mills and maces is a little weird. So right here, just around the head, 10 of those on each side. And if you don't have a mace or a club, you can just do kettlebell halos right here. Hold your kettlebell upside down. Same movement. 10 times around the head one way, 10 times around the head the other. Same concept, right? They're all like very, very, very slightly different, but at the end of the day, you gotta make do with what you got. You can make slight adjustments, all right? Um, I'm gonna start a little lighter on these Cossack squats. So Cossack squats, a lot of people call lateral lunges. Lateral lunges and Cossack squats are technically different. Cossack squats is when your feet stay out. So we're gonna have nice and wide, slight turn out of the toes. Right now I'm gonna do these in a front rack. So this kettlebell's in my right hand. I'm gonna go towards my left leg. Oh yeah. Get nice and deep. Just three on each side. All right, I like to use these as a mobility piece. Yes, they're strength, 
but I care more about depth. So I'm gonna go as heavy as I can. That allows me to get this low every single time. Now, not everybody's gonna be able to go that low and that's totally fine. Um, I'm just letting you know what I like to do with them. I prefer to use these as primarily mobility, strength mobility, because mobility is strength. But that's how I like to do them. Whew, talking and doing this is difficult. All right, so that was one set. You see how I went, like did the renegade rows, basically went right into the mills, 20, 30 seconds, and then 20, 30 seconds before going to the caustic squats. That's how I like to do it. We're gonna take about a minute and a half maybe, minute, minute and a half now, before going back to our second set. And then you do the same thing, run through, 20 or 30 seconds rest in between, and so on, all right? Let's get after it. All right, set number four. I am gonna do five, I'm tired, but I feel pretty good for the most part. It's just freaking hot and sweaty out. All right, set number four. I've got two 53-pound kettlebells here for these Renegade rows. I would normally try and go up in accessory work like this, but these are pretty hard right now, so I'm just sticking with that. They feel solid. I know I'm doing them the right way, so. 53 pounds each, 24 kilos for my non-Americans. Feet out wide. Squeeze my abs nice and tight. And we row. Mill, same thing, kind of staying with these. Um, so I actually want to break this down a little bit for you guys. Okay, so if you've never done this exercise before and you want to start to try it out, I'm going to show you real quick to break it down. Okay, I'm not going to go in too in depth because I want to keep this workout going. So we're going to start, it's in my right hand. First thing I'm going to do is turn to my left. Okay, I'm going to let this swing in front of me and then catch it, elbow against the body. This is called an inside circle. So again, it's in my right hand, turn to the left, swings in front of my body, catch, elbow against me, right? I'm then gonna do that again. I'm gonna add a pullover, which is right here, club behind my back, and I pull it back. So I like to tell people, imagine you're scratching your back with the club, and then come back. Again, elbow against the body. Don't literally scratch your back, okay? So again, we're here, inside circle, Pull over, reset, okay? Inside circle, pull over, reset, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we reach the bottom of that pull over, we're gonna turn our hips aggressively as if I'm gonna throw it at the wall to my left, all right? So here, inside circle, catch, <laughs> pull over, throw, okay? Inside circle, catch, start that pull over, and then throw. And you just break it down like that. Start light, and then when you start to feel more comfortable, you start to put them all together, right? But it is a throwing motion that comes from the hips, and your arm is along for the ride. If you try and do this with your arms, you're not gonna have a good time. If you do it with your hips, it'll be better, right? I don't know how many that was. We'll call it 10, okay? Again, same thing. This side's a little trickier, okay? Especially on this bad side, if I just try and use my arm, it's so much weaker. I need to use my hips. Right. And the hips will make the technique better. Because that's how you throw a ball. Obviously your shoulders moving, working. But you're powerful with the hips. Uh, I think that's seven. Eight. <sighs> All right. So that's how you do those, break those down a little bit. Go slow, take your time, build up, okay? It's complex movement, don't go too fast. Now these Cossack squats, I can go up on, so I'm going to. Um, just to show you real quick, if you want to, oh, spider, if you want to, you can hold your Cossack squats like this in the gobble position. I just kind of like it this way. I also, in this case, want you to watch my right foot. This motion is gonna help me get a little bit lower into that Cossack squat. So I'm turning that foot as so my toes come up. <sighs> Whew. That's gnarly. Whew. 
All right, one more set. Let's do it. All right, let's wrap this one up. I am gonna go up on uh, these Renegade rows just for the last set, because I can. All right, five on each side. this last set because it's the last one the faster you go the sooner you're done it's not always the best route all right we want we usually want to go slow and controlled <laughs> this up. Daddy's tired. Oh, I went too fast there. That's stupid. Slow down, Pat. Slow down. And that is a wrap. That's all I got for you guys today. That was a tough one, that was a sweaty one. I appreciate you guys sticking around today. Uh, we got to listen to heavy weights and it was fun. Uh, if you were interested in doing workouts like this, where you're gonna build functional strength, conditioning, and mobility using kettlebells and body weight, go ahead and click the link in my description below. 75% off for the first four weeks of training. 40 minutes a day, four times a week. That is all you need and the best part is you can do them at home. All right, I'll see you guys next time.